Let's think about exponents with ones and zeros. So let's take the number one and let's raise it to the eighth power. So we've already seen that there's two ways of thinking about this. You could literally view this as taking eight ones and then multiplying them together. So let's do that. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones, and then you're going to multiply them together. And if you were to do that, you would get well, one times one is one times one. It doesn't matter how many times you multiply one by one, you are going to just get one. You are just going to get one. And you could imagine, I did it eight times. I multiplied eight ones. But even if this was 80, or if this was 800, or if this was 8 million, if I just multiplied one, if I had 8 million ones and I multiplied them all together, it would still be equal to one. So one to any power is just going to be equal to one. And you would say, hey, what about 1 to the 0th power? 1 to the 0th power. Well, we've already said anything to the 0th power, except for 0, that's we're going to, it's actually up for debate, but anything to the 0th power is going to be equal to 1. And just as a little bit of intuition here, you could literally view this as our other definition of expon exponentiation, which is you start with a 1, and this number says how many times you're going to multiply that 1 times this number. So 1 times 1, 0 times is just going to be 1. And that was a little bit clearer when we did it like this, where we said 2 to the, let's say, 4th power, 2 to the 4th power is equal to, this was the other definition of exponentiation we had, which is you start with a 1, and then you multiply it by 2 four times. So times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2 which is equal to, let's see, this is equal to 16. So here, if you start with a 1, and then you multiply it by 1 0 times, you're still going to have that 1 right over there. And that's why anything that's not 0 to the 1 power is going to be equal to 1. Now let's try some other interesting scenarios. Let's start try some negative numbers. So let's take negative 1, and let's first raise it Let's first raise it to the 0 power. So once again, this is just going based on this definition. This is starting with a 1 and then multiplying it by this number 0 times. Well, that means we're just not going to multiply it by this number, so you're just going to get a 1. Let's try negative 1. Let's try negative 1 to the first power. Well, anything to the first power, you could view this, and I like going with this definition as opposed to this one right over here. If we were to make them consistent, if you were to make this definition consistent with this, you would say, hey, let's start with a 1 and then multiply it by 1 eight times. And you're still going to get a 1 right over here. But let's do this with negative 1. So we're going to start with a 1, and then we're going to multiply it by negative 1 one time. Times negative 1. And this is, of course, going to be equal to negative 1. Now let's take negative 1 and let's take it to the second power. We often say that we are squaring it when we take something to the second power. So negative 1 to the second power. Well, we could start with a 1. We could start with a 1 and then multiply it by negative 1 two times. Multiply it by negative 1. Multiply it by negative 1 twice. And what's this going to be equal to? And once again, by our old definition, you could also just say, hey, ignoring this one, because that's not going to change the value, we took two negative ones and we're multiplying them. Well, negative one times negative one is one. And I think you see a pattern forming. Let's take negative one, let's take negative one to the third power. To the third power. What's this going to be equal to? Well, by this definition, you start with a one and then you multiply it by negative one three times. So negative one times negative 1 times negative 1. Or you could just think of it as you're taking three negative 1s and you're multiplying it, because this 1 doesn't change the value. And this is going to be equal to negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So you see the pattern. One, negative 1 to the 0 power is 1. Negative 1 to the first power is negative 1. Then you multiply by negative 1 again to get positive 1. Then you multiply by negative 1 again to get negative 1. And the pattern you might be seeing is, is if you take negative 1 to an odd power, to an odd power, you're going to get negative 1. And if you take it to an even power, you're going to get 1. You're going to get 1, because a negative times a negative is going to be the positive, And you're, you're going to have an even number of negatives, so that you're always going to have negative times negatives. So this right over here, this is even. 
even is going to be a positive one. And then you could see that if you went to negative 1 to the fourth power. Negative 1 to the fourth power. Well, you could start with a 1 and then multiply it by negative 1 four times. So negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, which is just going to be equal to positive 1. So if someone were to ask you, if someone were to ask you, we already established that if you someone were to take 1 to the, I don't know, 1 millionth power, to the 1 millionth power, this is just going to be equal to 1. It's just going to be equal to 1. If someone told you, let's take negative 1 and raise it to the 1 millionth power, 1 millionth power, well, 1 million is an even number. So this is still going to be equal to positive 1. But if you took negative 1, if you took negative 1 to the 999,999th power, this is an odd number. So this is going to be equal to, this is going to be equal to negative 1.